In this short and sweet video tutorial, we'll cover the basics of PaintShop Pro. Once you get started, you'll be amazed by how much you can do. But rest assured, there are a number of learning tools to help you find your way. When you first launch PaintShop Pro, you'll start in the Welcome tab, where you can start with a blank canvas, start a project from a template, or open an existing image or project file to edit. The Welcome tab is also packed with tutorials and other learning material to help you master PaintShop Pro. There's a gallery of user artwork for inspiration, and the Get More tab gives you access to a variety of free and premium content including plugins, applications, scripts, brushes, and more to use with or inside of PaintShop Pro to extend your creativity. Let's go back to Start and choose Open to bring in an image. When you open a project, a friendly guided tour will show you around the interface, pointing out key features in PaintShop Pro. Once you've been through the tour, you can simply choose Finish and the guided tour will close until the next time you launch the application. If you feel that you've grasped all the tour has to offer, you can always check off Don't Show This Message Again and it will not reappear in subsequent sessions. Now, let me introduce you to the PaintShop Pro interface and where to find its most useful tools. PaintShop Pro has two workspaces, Essentials and Complete. The Essentials workspace, which is chosen by default, is perfect for those just starting out, as it has all the core tools you need for photo editing and design in a streamlined interface that's easy to navigate. The Complete workspace has more palettes open by default and includes a Manage tab at the top for full photo management. Let's jump back into the Essentials workspace, which we'll be working in today. On the left-hand side of your working area, you'll find the Tools toolbar, which displays the PaintShop Pro tools you're most likely to use. Just click the plus icon on the bottom of the toolbar to expose even more tools, which you can always add to your toolbar. And a handy alphabetical search can help you find any tool you're looking for quickly and easily. Let's start by reviewing the defaults that are already included in the toolbar within the Essentials workspace. The first tool we'll look at is Zoom, which pushes in on your image when you left-click and pulls out when you right-click. If you're zoomed in on your image, you may find use for the Pan tool, which lets you control which part of your image is visible in the image window by clicking and dragging. Just to the right, you have Pick and Move. The Pick tool moves, rotates, and reshapes raster layers and selects and modifies vector objects. As an example, we'll resize this image with the Pick tool by clicking and dragging a corner handle of the bounding box. The Move tool simply moves a raster layer or vector layer on the canvas by clicking and dragging. Now let's look at the Dropper tool. The dropper picks up colors from your image, so you can use the colors for other elements of your project, like text for example. Just click the dropper on the color you want to capture, and you'll see it becomes your foreground or stroke color in the Materials palette. The Materials palette lets you paint, draw, and fill with a variety of colors, gradients, patterns, and textures. It's a palette you'll rely on regularly, which is why it's also open by default. It's a powerful tool with lots of options, so to get to know it intricately, make sure you watch one of our Materials palette tutorials. Now I'm going to swap the color I just picked up from the foreground stroke properties to the background fill properties so I can add some text on the image and have the color I selected fill the text. I'll make the foreground stroke properties transparent so the text doesn't have a stroke or an outline. All right, now let's jump forward on the toolbar to the text tool so I can show you how we can apply the color that we picked from the dropper to our text. The text tool places text on top of your image. You can adjust fonts, size, style, letting, kerning, and more for the look that you desire. Next, let's take a look at our selection tools. Selection tools enable you to create a selection when you want to isolate a part of your image to edit. The regular selection tool on top creates a geometrically shaped selection, like a rectangle, ellipse, or triangle. You can use a selection to adjust or retouch one area of a photo without affecting other areas. I'll use the eraser tool to demonstrate. As you can see, we can erase everything within our selection without affecting what's outside our isolated area. To deselect when you're done, Go to Selections and choose Select None, or just use the keyboard command Ctrl D. You can also choose to use the Freehand Selection tool, which allows you to draw an irregularly shaped selection. Magic Wand makes a selection based on pixel values within a specified tolerance level. Here I'll use it to isolate the hiker's legs. The Smart Selection brush selects the edges of an area automatically when you brush over a sample area. You can see how easy it makes it to outline the entire hiker. You can also use selection tools to isolate a portion of a photo and paste it into another photo. So I'll open up another image to use as a background. I'll go back to our first image, copy our selection, jump back to our new background, and then paste it in as a new layer. Then using the pick tool again, we can resize the image and position it exactly where we want it. And this is a good opportunity to look at the crop tool, 
The crop tool enables you to remove unwanted portions of your photo. You can either crop freehand by clicking and dragging the corners or sides of the crop tool into your liking, or use one of the many crop presets included to crop to common image sizes. Right underneath the crop tool, you'll find the straighten and correct perspective tools. You can use the straighten tool to fix a crooked horizon, or the perspective correction tool to make a photo appear as though it was taken from a different angle. The next set of tools we'll look at are the red eye and makeover tools. So I'll open up a new image here. The red eye tool replaces the red color that sometimes shows up in a subject's pupils with a dark gray color, restoring a natural look. Under the makeover tool, you'll find five different modes, blemish fixer, toothbrush, eye drop, suntan, and thinify, each of which lets you apply different cosmetic fixes to subjects in your photos. We'll use the blemish remover first to touch up a few imperfections on our subject's skin, and then we'll use the toothbrush tool to easily brighten and whiten her teeth. Now let's take a look at the paintbrush. If you'd like to add custom color or texture on top of your image, you'll want to use the paintbrush tool. Paintbrush lets you paint on top of your image with colors, textures, or gradients. The related airbrush tool simulates painting with an airbrush or a spray can. Now you've already seen the eraser tool in action, which erases raster layer pixels to transparency. But you also have the background eraser, which erases around the edges of areas you want to keep in a photo. The next tool over, the clone tool, removes flaws and objects by painting over them with another part of the image that it copies, simply by right-clicking on it. You can also use the clone tool to create some cool effects in the same way. The scratch remover removes wrinkles and scratches from photos, and the object remover covers unwanted elements of a photo with a neighboring texture in the same image. Now I'm going to open a new image to show you the flood fill tool. Flood fill simply allows you to fill areas of your image with a color. The color changer tool changes the color of an object while preserving the shading and luminosity of the original color. Finally, let's open up one more image to work with shapes. We've already worked with text, but in this example, we'll use the text tool and the rectangle tool together to create a composition. So I'll select the rectangle tool, and then I'll just click and drag to create the size I like. And now I'm going to open up my layers palette so I can reduce the opacity of my rectangle. Layers are an incredibly powerful tool for creating compositions. You can use them to add elements to your images, create artistic effects and illustrations, and edit your images more easily. Make sure to check out one of our many layers tutorials to learn more about them. And there we have it, a simple composition combining an image, text, and a shape with transparency. So far, we've barely scratched the surface of all the things you can do in PaintShop Pro. But at least now you're familiar with the tools you'll use most frequently on your tools toolbar to complete any project. A handy help menu gives you access to all kinds of learning and help resources, so if you're ever stumped, you'll find your answers there. Happy learning, and have fun in PaintShop Pro!